Welcome to the shop, fellow maker. Happy to have you here. We've got a ton of fun projects going on. Brittany is working on her Carlac costume, and Carlac has some long, pointy ears. There's a bunch of ways you can make them. Uh, we want to have Brittany's ear that we can sculpt on to make the ears, uh, but we want to do it digitally. You could make like an alginate casting of the ear and then make a copy of it with something like HydroCal and then sculpt right on top of that. But we're going to do it digitally today. In fact, we're going to do it with our phone. Much like we did the head scanning for our satisfactory build, uh, we can use Polycam or any number of 3D scanning apps on the phone to make a digital copy, a 3D copy of any of your body parts. Uh, though with that, we sculpted the helmet around our heads. And in this case, we're actually going to 3D print the ears so that we can physically sculpt right on top of them. In an area with lots of light, we set down a pillow so that Brittany could put her head down and not move while we're doing any of the scanning. Uh, never used Bobby Pins before. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I also made a little story stick. I made it exactly a known dimension, in this case 65 millimeters. That's just going to... <laughs> Some double-sided tape and I stuck that to the side of her head so that in the scan there's an object with a known dimension, so we can double check the scale later. This did take us a couple tries. The first attempt at uh, doing the photogrammetry scanning, uh, we found out that Britt's ears were a little tight to her head, and we want to be able to get the detail behind those ears. We also found that uh, bobby pins worked okay, but getting the hair really flat to that side of the head helps even more. So, on the second try, we did a couple of things. First, we jammed a little piece of clay behind Britt's ear to bend it forward just a little bit so we could hopefully get a little more detail around the edge of the ear. We also used a little spray bottle with water to get her hair wet and sort of flatten it against her head. It's cold. <laughs> the flyaway hairs tend to wreak havoc with the photogrammetry uh, and resolving a, a 3D mesh. So having it flat to your skin is the best case solution. Like I said, we use Polycam to do the photogrammetry scanning. You don't need a fancy phone for it. It just takes a bunch of pictures and then it sends them up to the cloud, processes it, and then sends you back a 3D model. You can view it right on the phone. If you're happy with it, you can crop it down to just the parts that you need and then export it in any number of uh, file formats. We used an OBJ and then I just used Dropbox to send it over to my computer. Over at the computer, we're gonna do the rest of the processing in Blender. It's a free 3D modeling program. There is a lot inside of Blender, and I had to look up things several times. In fact, every time I use Blender, I have to look up things. But if it's a little bit uh, intimidating, don't worry. It intimidates me too. You just have to look things up as you go. What I ended up doing was importing the model into Blender, and the first thing I did was check the scale. Once I zoomed in on the mesh, I can use the measure tool and I set the units to millimeter. And then holding control, I can click on one side of my story stick, click on the other side of my story stick, and confirm that it is in fact still 65 millimeters, which is perfect. Next, even though it looks like one solid mesh, there's actually several meshes overlapping one another, so we have to merge them all together. You wanna go from object mode to edit mode, and with vertices selected, you can change to x-ray mode so that you can drag select over everything and it'll select all the vertices on your model then go to mesh merge by distance and it doesn't look like it did anything but it actually combined everything into one final mesh next i'll go to object mode so i can rotate the whole thing to make the ear just flat ish with the ground plane then i'll go to edit mode and select faces and then again with x-ray mode on i will drag select over the whole thing go to mesh extrude Faces. And as you move your mouse up and down, it will create an extruded chunk of your, uh, your ear. You can extrude that uh, up or down, doesn't really matter. Uh, you just want a big old chunk that you can then cut a, fl a flat bottom on. To cut the flat bottom, we're going to use the bisect tool. I like to change the viewport to the right view or the side view. So we're looking straight at it. Uh, again, in edit mode with your faces selected and x-ray mode on. You can drag select over the whole thing and then go to mesh bisect and then as you click and drag in the viewport it'll draw a line where the model is going to get cut into two pieces. If you hold control it'll make a nice horizontal line for you to cut a flat bottom on it. Uh, in the options for bisect you want to turn on fill so that it uh, fills the hole 
and you can tell it to get rid of the part you no longer want. If it's getting rid of the wrong part, just rotate your line 180 degrees and it'll cut off the other side. That got us a nice flat bottom. If we go to the top viewport, we can continue bisecting to remove just some of the extra geometry we don't need. We don't need that story stick anymore. We can just cut that right off. You can use the bisect tool to remove any other parts of the geometry that you don't need. And then if there's parts of the surface that need to be cleaned up a little bit, like that uh, clay that we put behind Britt's ear, you can use the sculpting tool inside of Blender to push and pull the surface a bit to get it closer to what you need. Once you're totally happy with your model, you can export it as an STL file to get it ready for 3D printing. In our case, we dragged that file into Prusa Slicer, our slicer of choice, and it looks like it's probably the right size, which is a good sign. Then we sent it over to our printers to make real physical copies. I have Brittany's ears. <laughs> And uh, if I take a pair of calipers and measure these and measure Brittany's ears, turns out they are exactly the right size. These look terrific. And these are useful for any number of things. You could uh, sand them nice and smooth. Um, you can sculpt right on top of them. You can put little earrings in there or something. These are terrific and useful. Uh, and a lot faster actually than if we did this with like Alginate and HydroCal. We'd still be waiting for that HydroCal to cure. This only took us about an hour and a half with the printing. So I am over the moon. I'm gonna hand these over to Brittany so she can start sculpting her ears. There you go. Thank you. You betcha. And I'm excited to see how those turn out over the next couple weeks. I'm sure I'm gonna get to hear all about it while Britt gets to do her sculpting. That'll wrap it up. A quick little tutorial for you. I get really excited about these 3D tools. I love my 3D modeling. Uh, and 3D scanning is a lot of fun. Even if you don't have a project in mind, grab the app on your phone and just go out and scan stuff for fun. It's, it's a great way to capture memories. I 3D scanned a sandcastle that my nephew made. Now I just have that forever, even though uh, the waves have already taken it away. I hope you enjoyed that. I'm sure having a lot of fun with this tech. Uh, I hope you learned something. Thanks so much for hanging out. Thanks as always to the members of our Extra Credit Club for all of the supports because of them that we can afford to keep the lights on around here. If you want to get access to our videos early, you can join over on Patreon or right here through YouTube memberships. We appreciate that help. We couldn't do it without you. That'll do it from us here in the shop today. Thanks so much for hanging out. We'll see you in the next build.